Wrecker, 11 points, but four of 15 field goals. You think the last time these two teams played, went for a second basket in this ball game with the miss, and Oliver comes up with the rebound. Oliver off the dribble, there with the tip missed is settles. Be a brand new clock, 35 seconds, and gives Iowa a chance to bring some new players in. Brian Lersman has also come on for the Hawkeyes, as has Jacob Jakes. But right now, Kent McCausland is the only Iowa starter on the floor. Rucker against Gladness, wants to back him down, but Rucker's there to help out. Right baseline with the scoop to score. Oh, that's a big time move right there as he kind of double pumped it to avoid the block. Good move by Rain. All guys with that patented pressure. And Turner against the double team finds the open man record. Now Indiana has some numbers, three on two, but don't take advantage of it. Now there's the final, and what an overtime for the Nittany Lions, John. 98-85. Outscored Ohio State, the second best team in the league, record-wise anyway, by 13 points. Well, when I was first given that score, I thought, this can't be right that they had 15-point lead in overtime. That was something. The home court advantage is uh, an advantage of time. Oh, what a great look by Gladness to record. Game tied up at eight. And at least at the start, both teams are playing like they're hungry, like this number three seed means a lot to them. It does. I think playing Friday night um, is much better for your brackets going in, not to have to play the number one seed until Sunday. The Hawkeyes will have the ball when we return. The first to break, 14 on the shot clock for Iowa. When they return, this ball game all scores brought to you by ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. There is an upset right there. Michigan Man. at Wisconsin on senior day. Wins by 12. Held Wisconsin to 39 points. And there's the one we just mentioned by 13. Penn State gets a big victory at home. Maryland in the ACC, a victor. And Florida loses at Vanderbilt. Jakes comes off the inbounds pass to score a three and send the Hawkeyes to a lead of three at 11-8. Indiana's just not making it very hard for Iowa to score right now. Two dunk shots by Koch. Easy layup there. And, of course, the Hawkeyes feel that if they go inside, that will be their strength against an Indiana team not noted for its inside game. Iowa has the advantage inside. Their size, their rebounding. There's a good block by Haston. One-on-one, -on -one, Turner. Turner against Lorsman to score. And Rob Turner, six points. I think Turner saw the height advantage he had on Lorsman. And a nice spin move there. In the middle, it is Joey Range to connect for the Hawkeyes. Range with his second early basket. Both teams shooting the ball very well. Uh, but Iowa's getting the drive to the hoop really uncontested. Range, a nice job there. Got the easy shot. Wrecker pulls up, nails a three. He's got seven early. And we are, at least at the outset, headed for a high-scoring afternoon. Indiana, the leading scoring team in the league. And Iowa with their... Press and turnover potential can score a lot of points as well. Iowa number three in the league in scoring. Jake drives the baseline. Crowd wanted to walk. Lursman with a good look to put it down. It didn't really look like he was hoping, but he swung that leg around, got the shot away. Steal by Iowa. Jakes comes up with it. Iowa tries to add to a two-point lead six minutes into the ballgame. Hawkeyes still looking inside. The shoot around today, Tom Davis suggested they be a little more patient before they go inside, and this they have done so far. The travel forced by the defensive record. Now that was on Oliver. He's the point guard. 5'11 sophomores had a great year. Iowa's leading scorer at 12 points a game. 
Settles back in now. Wrecker with a home run ball looking for Turner. Turner played wide receiver that time, looked over his right shoulder to come up with it. And Hasted in deep scores for the Hoosiers. That's going to be key for Indiana. They need to score off the Iowa press, not just break the press and set up the half court offense. Game even at 15. Jakes and Oliver along the perimeter. Settles McCoglin also in there, along with range, and the bomb won't go. The rebound by Wrecker, slapped away by Oliver, who picks up the foul. Iowa love to take that three-point shot. They were very effective early in the year, and then they slid off a little bit on the three-point shooting, trying to get that high back. It's a big part of their offensive game. Part of that, Kent McCoglin, his three-point percentage dropping as he hurt his ankle against Michigan State the first time Iowa and Michigan State played. Re-injured it the second time, but he regained his shooting eye against Illinois a week ago. Record challenged by Lersman. Haston against Settles. Settles hit the ball, and Haston didn't, didn't leave his hand. It's either got to be a jump ball or a turnover. It is. It's a turnover on the traveling call up and down by Haston. Not the quick hands by Settle. Haston's got to let that ball go. You can't jump up even if somebody touches it and come down with it. J.R. Kutch back into the lineup for the Hawkeyes who are tied with the Hoosiers at 15. Settles the lob looking for range and Gladness got in the way. The record has trouble on the dribble though. Another turnover. And Settles gets it behind the back to Range, but no basket. The record knew it was outnumbered two to one. The only way to stop it was to take the charge, and Settles ran over Record. Let's watch. He's got to stay right with Settles. It's going to be an easy layup. He takes the chance on drawing the call, and he does. Number four colliding with number four, and it's the first foul called against Jess Settles. Two for Iowa, one for Indiana. Crowd's been rather quiet. That's to Iowa's advantage. Who just tried to take their first lead. The miss by Haston, but to get another opportunity. Good look inside to Turner. And good defense by Iowa to stop him. McCausland off the glass and down. Big turnaround. That's a four-point turnaround right there. Indiana misses the dunk. Iowa takes advantage of it down the other end. So Indiana losing their first opportunity to take their first lead. Now they come back, needing a two to tie and a three to take their first lead. Now zoned by Iowa. Guyton ducks past McCausland, misses badly, and settles is there for the rebound. Guyton really struggled in Iowa City this year, wound up with one of his lowest point performances of the year. J.R. Koch runs the floor well, gets the basketball, and takes advantage of it. Iowa's out hustling Indiana right now. That's the difference in this ball game, although it's only four points. Record for three. Indiana's good shooting has kept them in the game, but right now it's Iowa's rebounding and hustle that's got them the lead. There's Tom Davis, long one of the better rebounding coaches in the country, and you notice for Iowa, everybody will go to the glass. Like Dean Oliver had a dozen rebounds the other night against Northwestern. Yes, Dean Oliver, the point guard. That's pretty impressive. Nine of those offensive rebounds. There's another one. That's Luresman, the smallest guy on the floor, just picks up the rebound. There's been a double-figure effort the last time these two teams got together with 11. And his Lersman there. McCausland, open, comes off the pick to score. Didn't seem that ankle bothered him there. He got good extension on that jump. Nothing but net. And he gives Iowa a six-point lead, their biggest to the game. Lersman reaching in, trying for the takeaway. For Lersman, his first foul, and for Iowa, their third. Multiple substitutions when we come back. 10.53 left to play in the opening half. The Hawkeyes have enjoyed their biggest lead now up by... The Iowa Hawkeyes are on a six-point run, John, after Indiana had a chance to take their first lead and didn't get the job done. Good pass there by Haston, but watch Turner. Good hustle by Settles. Deflects the ball away. The fast break for the Hawkeyes. Drops to McCausland. Tough shot there. He voids the charge and gets the bank shot to go in. So a four-point play. Now that gives Iowa a six-point lead. Larry Richardson, number 33, and number 11, Dane Fife, have checked in for Indiana. Iowa off to a good start from the field, and five steals already due to the press. Also in, Michael Lewis, number 24, one of the top assist men in the Big Ten. Lewis has really played well lately, hasn't he, John? He sure has. 
averaging about seven and a half assists his last ten games to go with about nine points. Against Hazen, it is J.R. Koch. Hawkeyes have Bauer, Oliver, Rucker, Koch, and McCoslin on the floor. Near the midway point of the first half, and Iowa with a six-point lead, trying to extend the run. This one will be short, and the rebound is taken down by Haston, who leads the Hoosiers with six rebounds a game and averages seven rebounds a game in conference play. Good hands by Bauer. He tipped that ball away. A little easy on that pass by Lewis. Bauer, one of the toughest defenders in the league. Oliver draws the foul. He went against the big guys there. Haston 6'10". Oliver didn't back down at all. He tried to move that shot around a little bit. Was able to draw the foul. His first foul, Indiana's second. Oliver will go to the line. A 75% free throw shooter. Indiana just has not come out with the intensity they need to have. Uh, defensively, their intensity will help them to prevent Iowa from scoring. And the 22 points already for the Hawkeyes halfway through this first half. And the Hawkeyes on those free throws by Oliver extend the run to eight unanswered points over Indiana. And Jason Price comes in at the point guard. Six-foot junior out of Chicago. And now the Hawkeyes have a very quick backcourt with the addition of Price. Not often that Price and Oliver have played together along the back line for Iowa. And Indiana's going with three guards, Dane Five, Michael Lewis, and A.J. Guyton, so it allows Tom Davis to go with a smaller lineup. The cut by Fife, the shot will go down. Boy, nice move by Fife as he went up against the much bigger J.R. Koch and got that little jump hook to go down softly. And it brings an end to an eight-point Iowa run. And Guyton stepped in on that one as Oliver got caught up in the air. Hawkeyes with their fifth turnover. Lewis to the lane, Lewis to the glass, and Lewis will go to the line. You can see, India has been more aggressive these last two possessions. It's got him a basket, this time a foul. That's the way Indiana needs to play to stay in the game. Here's Oliver. He tries the pass, but Guyton steals it. Avoids the trap right there, and then quickly down the other end. Indiana's best offense is to try to score before Iowa sets up their defense. Koch with a foul, so Lewis goes to the free throw line. That for Indiana, their first free throw attempt today. Settles back in, replacing Rucker. Yeah, Indiana starts to make a little run. Tom Davis comes right back with uh, Settles. A real banger on the inside. Try to calm things down. And just with that strong finish, for a while, of course, he had to worry about his health, and now he just figures he's going to let it all hang out. No reason to save it any longer, and he's really played well lately. Well, you gotta like the way a guy like that plays. He's hard-nosed, he's gonna give you everything he has each game. Uh, he may be injured a little bit, but he's not gonna let you know. Just keep playing. You gotta love a guy like that. The trail against Cox. Defense by a Richardson, part of the reason. The turnover's now catching up with Iowa. It's prevent them from scoring. Koch does a nice job on the out-of-bounds to keep Fife from getting the ball in. And now Jakes will come on to play that position along the baseline, which is so vital in the Iowa pressure. Thursman comes in. Oliver and Price go out. Fake the long one. And now a whistle. That'll be on Jakes. A warning. Can't reach over that out-of-bounds line. You can extend your hands, but you can't reach over. Ever aggressive, Jacob Jakes. Five falls down, the pass comes right to him, but he was laying on the out-of-bounds line when he caught the ball. I guess he was not in a receiving position for that pass, was he, John? Uh, if you're in the end zone, then it's a touchdown, <laughs> but in this game, if you're on that line, you're going to be out of bounds. That's not where you want to catch it. Obviously, Coach Knight didn't see it that way. Right in front of the Indiana bench. Let's watch, Haston. Fife just tripped. The ball comes to him. There you see his left foot is clearly out of bounds. Even Jake thought Lewisman was going up with that shot. Yes, he did. Pretty good defense there, as you can see the crowd applauding. Ten seconds to shoot. Here's Lewisman going all the way. Lewisman around the circle to score. 
Now, it's a charge when you run into one of the white guys, but when you run into one of the guys in gold, that's a help. That's yeah. exactly what happened to Lewisman. That'll work, won't it? Well, that works. That's, that's no foul. Lewisman's not the kind of guy you look to take the ball to the basket, but he does on occasion. Tough shot. He banked that one in. A six-point lead for Iowa, equaling their biggest as we go under the eight-minute mark in the first half. Easton on the baseline, and the rebound by Settles. It's normally a good shot for him. He's a good face-up jump shooter. Only seven feet on that one, but missed it. Here's Settles for three. Jess Settles with his 15th three of the season. And a foul on Dane five as Bauer went to block him out. Five ran over him, not Bauer down right in the lane, and that's a foul on five. And so Iowa increases the lead to nine, a chance to make it more. But first, we have a timeout. 7.46 left in a rapidly played first half. The Hawkeyes on a roll of open the 28-19 lead. Indiana 19 at Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, where the Hawkeyes try to make it six straight against the Indiana Hoosiers. We take a look at our Northwest Bank quick stat. You said, John, rebounding would be a factor. You can see Iowa's almost doubled in in rebounding, and they have on the offensive end. McCausland inbound. The Hawkeyes on a 10-2 run over the last 5-16. Iowa with a fresh 35 as they inbound. On a bounce play set up for McCausland, trying to get behind the three-point line. Lewis in good position defensively. There's been guarded by five as Indiana stays with a man-to-man. Range gets the garbage, but an offensive foul is called. Lewis in good position as he draws the foul. It will be foul number two on Ryan Lersman, giving the Hoosiers the ball with 7.27 to go in the first half. It's the battle for the third seed in the Big Ten Tournament next weekend in Chicago. Settles good anticipation for the Iowa Steel. Can't make passes that long against this Iowa fresh. You need about a 15 or 20 foot pass at the most. That one tried to go 40. Settles stepped right in. Settles trying to get around Richardson. Now open is Jakes. With the rebound, Larry Richardson. Lewis goes baseline. Nice drive to score. And two Hawkeyes on him. He's left handed. He likes that side of the floor. He got around them both for the layup. First basket, fourth point for Michael Lewis. Settles over Richardson to knock it down. Jess Settles continues to play well at the tail end of his senior season. Seven points in the first half of this one. Well, it's confidence that his injury doesn't seem to be bothering him at all. That's over and back. Bobby Knight does not think so. Five left from this side of the floor and then caught the ball, landed in the backcourt. Let's get another look. Let's see. There he leaves in the front, comes down in the back. The official called the over and back. Bob Knight doesn't agree. It's a nine-point lead for Iowa. Settles good luck for Jacob Jakes. Nice move inside to score, and the Hawkeyes have had a double-figure advantage. And here comes Donnie Gray to the Indiana bench. Bob Knight was up. Trying to get an explanation on the last over and back call. And Donnie Gray did not make the call, but came over. And he's in a discussion with Bob Knight right now. One more look. Four court to back court. Now Tom Davis wants an explanation. For Donnie Gray and Dennis Rocco are with him. You wish you could lip read at times like this, John? Yeah, I don't understand what they're doing. I'm not sure on the rule on that. The officials were going to say that his last possession or his feet were in the front court, and then he caught the ball in the back court, and they went over and back. The question is whether or not he had the ball in the front court to establish that he was in this side of the floor and then went back court to cause the over and back foul. The question is, did he ever go over? 
I would think Knight's argument would be that he never did have the ball in the front court. And then, in fact, couldn't have been over and back. The call stands because play continued, so there's no way to reverse the call. Lewis on the baseline for the drive by Richardson. So that got the crowd edgy. Now they're ecstatic as Richardson hits the dunk. And Oliver quiets them down and a foul. Oliver going to the corner. He loved to shoot from there and knocked it home. Sends the Hawkeyes to an 11-point lead. And we'll go to the free throw line. The big key here at Assembly Hall is always how to deal with this crowd. And Richardson makes the dunk shot. Iowa dealt with it by simply bringing it down quickly. Oliver hits the bank shot and a chance to hit a three-point play on the free throw. Rob Turner, who was hot early, comes back in for Indiana. Here you go, Richardson at the Indiana end. And now Oliver quickly, right between two players, the foul on Fife, his second. And then the bank shot goes. Oliver with four. Iowa now with a lead of 12 as Oliver has hit all three of his free throw tries. All Another tips away. Iowa. They have very quick hands by the Hawkeyes. Obviously, they've used this press all year long, and other opponents only see it once or twice a year. Lursman open for three. Koch with a fingertip rebound, and as he tries to take it back up, he is fouled. Lewis on the foul for Indiana. There's the height by Iowa paying off. Indiana really with three guards, Wrecker, Lewis, and Turner. Koch and Rucker are much bigger than Indiana's big ball. Hawkeyes have lost only one game when they've led at the half this year. They are 12 and 1 when they're ahead at the half. Still a long time before halftime. But right now, Iowa with a 12 point advantage. And remember at uh, Iowa City, Larry, that was only a four point lead by the Hawkeyes at the half. And they played a great second half. Really took Indiana out of that game early in the second half. Talk about seniors who finished strong. John J.R. Koch looking for his fifth consecutive double figure ball game. And he's second on the team in scoring, third in rebounding. Very solid player. And that's what Tom Davis, he's taken good, solid players and really molded them into great teams in his career at Iowa. In the middle, it's Richards. It spins and draws the foul. Koch going after him, picking up his second foul. The Larry Richardson to the line for Indiana. Larry Richardson recently has played very well, career highs in two of the last three ball games, but has been an inconsistent player and struggled at Illinois on Wednesday. He really seemed to have the fire uh, in his two big games, two career back-to-back -back scoring and rebounding games, and he struggled against Illinois. All the Hoosiers did, for that matter, from the field. Richardson misses on the first. One thing Richardson really worked on this year, just catching the basketball. And that's not always an easy thing to accomplish. He had six points in the previous meeting. Confidence real key with Larry. And he seems to have picked some up in these last few games. He brings Indiana back to within 13. Iowa trying for their fifth conference road victory. Indiana on the home court this year at 10 and 3. Oliver looking inside through the hands of Guy Rucker. It's Indiana basketball on the eighth Iowa turnover. You better pressure up top and then also on the big men inside as Gladys was able to swing around Rucker cause that uh, ball to go out of bounds. A.J. Guyton with the ball. John, he has not scored today. Got only two the last time these two teams got together. That was a tough team for Guyton. They look at Joy Range. He bangs him around out there. Guyton doesn't like to get pushed around. And I, that can be a reason why he struggles against Iowa. He struggles against very few teams in his career. Richardson in deep to score in Indiana, starting to make a run on Iowa. Yeah, I think at the beginning of the year, Larry, Richardson would really not know what to do with the ball when he got in that position. Now he turns to the right shoulder, goes right up against Rucker, ends up with a layup. Koch the good luck from range. Puts it up there too hard, and Wrecker rips down the rebound for Indiana. Good defensive move by Richardson there as Koch had to change his shot. Indiana trying to get back in this game. They're down 11. Richardson and Turner, a little two-man game. It is Turner taking the shot and knocking it down. Turner's a great outside shooter. He almost wanted to pass that one up. It was only 18 feet. That's his shot. He's got eight points in this ball game, and on senior day for Rob Turner and William Gladys, Turner is feeling it. Tough shot by range. Here comes Indiana. 
Turner with a big rebound. Landis and Richardson up front. Richardson puts it in. And Indiana down a moment ago by 15. Back to within seven. And the timeout comes with 340. Left to play in the first half. A 20-second timeout. Time now, this 20-second timeout brought to you by Spies. Indiana set a Big Ten overtime record at Illinois, their seventh overtime game of the year. Previous record was six by Ohio State in 82. Let's watch Turner now. Shot fake. He's going to pass it out. I'm wide open. He takes that shot. It's a good shot for him. He's having a good ball game. Richardson's not sure whether to dunk this or lay it in. I think his momentum carried him. He lost his balance. His momentum carried him into the backboard with that shot. And it rolled right in. The fans happy about that one. So Indiana on a 7-0 run has come back from 15 down to pull within seven of the Hawkeyes. Oliver guarded by Geigen. McCausland working against Turner. And Iowa slowing the game down a little bit. They realized, Davis realized Indiana getting back in this game. Rebound run down by Gladness. Indiana wants to keep the pace fast. Record challenges McCausland. McCausland fouls it. I don't know. If there's no real secret, Larry. The team's playing hard and intense. They're going to do good things. And if you're laying back and letting the opponent attack you, you're in big trouble. And we've seen both teams in this game let that happen to them. And the momentum shifts each time it changes. Each time the intensity of the team changes. Rutgers now hit 32 of his last 36 free throw tries. He had a great game against Michigan six days ago, 22 of 25 from the line. And he's still feeling that, isn't he, John? He's got nine points in this ball game. Indiana on their way back from 15 down to five down here at Assembly Wilmington, Indiana, where Iowa's one-time 14-point lead has been shaved to five. Now let's take a look at the Raptor game summary. There's your leading scores, Recker and Koch. But look at the field goal percentage, 52% by Iowa. Indiana, 62%, and they trail by five. It's got to be the turnover. It's got to be. That and maybe the second chance baskets by the Hawkeyes off those offensive rebounds. Now you can't figure Indiana's going to shoot 62% for the game. They shot 37 in the first meeting. And there you are. There are the turnovers, 11 by Indiana. Way too many at this point of the game. Our guys trying to end an Indiana run. Indiana with eight unanswered points. Offensive foul called against Jacob Jakes. That was Wrecker helping out. Saw Jakes on the move, got in front of him. And the foul. Watch the left side of your screen. There's Wrecker in good position. He's set. And right in front of Donnie Gray with the call. At the eighth foul called against the Hawkeyes in the half. Indiana assessed with five. And record right back to the free throw line where a moment ago he knocked in a pair. And as we mentioned and documented, he's a terrific free throw shooter. He's a slashing kind of player, not an overpowering player. And in that ball game, he was moving to the hoop without the ball, drawing the fouls, going to the line. Indiana needed all those free throws to win the game. Rucker averages 16.4 a ball game, but has averaged 19 over the last five. He's going for his 11th point in this one. Nice soft touch on that one. Only a sophomore. So the one-time 14-point Iowa lead is now three, and Indiana with a big 10-point run underway. Oliver off the baseline. Can't get it to go down. Scrapping the rebound. Bauer kicks it right back outside to Jakes. And Indiana playing good defense on this inbound set for Iowa. Indiana's defense has really kept Iowa quiet in these last three or four minutes. They've certainly stepped it up from the first ten minutes of the ball game. Oliver's the guy who has to turn that around for Iowa. Ten seconds to shoot. Oliver with the shot and the miss, and Indiana's record with another rebound. Luke Record's really taken over the last five minutes. Jake's nearly a steal, and the Hawkeyes do come up with it in the person of Oliver. Good recovery by Jess Settles, and Iowa will play with just under two minutes to go in the first half. Jake really wants to work with Richardson in there, but an offensive foul. Richardson holding his own. Jake pitches the elbow. He gets caught at it. It's his second foul. Here's from behind the basket. Watch Richardson right there. The right 
elbow right to the chest. Richardson goes down, and the foul on Jakes. And Indiana on a run, trying to cut a three-point Iowa lead. Record tries to tie it, leaves it short. Record of the baseline. Oh, look at the battle under there. You got eight guys battling for that rebound. On the baseline, good look. Lurs with the settles to end a long Hyundai scoring drought. The yeah, settle is very quick. For 6'7", he is much quicker than most big men. And you saw there, he got to the basket very quickly. And, of course, he's somewhat limited physically from where he was when he began at the University of Iowa. Turner with a big three for the Hoosiers. What a half he's had. He is a very streaky player, but when that shot is dropping, he'll take a shot from anywhere. And he makes that one from three. 11 in the first half for Rob Turner. His average is five. Final minute, first half. Settles has also had the hot hand. He's the leading Hawkeye scorer. He has 11. Hey, give Iowa credit. Every time Indiana's made a nice run, the crowd's been up. Usually it settles, makes a shot, and keeps Iowa in the lead. It's now four. Indiana with a big possession. About five-second differential in the shot clock. Indiana's going to run some time. Trying to get free in the middle is Richardson. Rather have your guards hang on to it. Now Rector's got it. Now Turner. Inside 10 on the shot clock as Turner hits another. 14 in the first half for Rob Turner. There's been trying to break down Guyton. The rebound by Richardson as the half comes to an end. I will end in this ball game at 37 to 23 with five and a half to play. But Indiana comes roaring back, and at the half, it's a one-point ball. Game. A moment ago, the intensity in this last game, this really does mean something because a third seed could be quite important. It will be an extra little time off, uh, not having to play on Friday, which uh, Indiana may still have to do if they lose this game. That's right, because Indiana could go any place from third to seventh in the seedings. Hawkeyes know they won't play on Thursday, though. With a loss, they're fifth, and with the win, of course, they're third. Well, the, the pride on the line here, too. This is senior night for both teams. Even though I was on the road, it's the last regular season game for their seniors. I think you can see that in Settles. He's playing extra hard. And now let's take a look. And drains it. Luke Recker, Indiana sophomore guard. He's working against the zone here on the baseline. He's open. He wants the ball. A little cry on his face there because he didn't get it, but now he does. Gets the easy layup. When you're open, they usually find you. The Iowa Press, a signature of Tom Davis. Here it is. Indiana inbounds. Quick hands. The steal now. Quickly try to score against it. Three on two breaks. Settles takes it right in. And so we've got a terrific ball game going at the half, a one-point game. Above their 45% league average, 58% for Indiana. We talked at the open how Indiana had to shoot well. They sure are getting that done. Both teams doing well from the line. Iowa's having trouble three-point field goals. We talked about that being important for them. Turnovers, high for both teams. Both coaches want to see that drop down. Rebounds are even subs, although you can't directly correlate that to points. Uh, quite a margin for Iowa, 28 days. It's certainly interesting in terms of the styles of the two head coaches, isn't it? We take a look at the individual scores on senior day. The senior Rob Turner, 14 points, and he only played 15 minutes. Now, he'll play a lot in this second half. He's off to a good start. Record with 11. Surprisingly for Indiana, A.J. Guyton not there. He has not scored in the first half for Iowa settles. He's your guts, gutsy player, 11 points, J.R. Koch. So you can see Iowa scoring from the inside. Their three-point shooting down in tonight's game. In the first half, there were four ties. Iowa led throughout the game, never trailed. At the half, it's Iowa 41, Indiana 40, and a 40. Hoosiers did the lead in the first half, but they closed the 14-point deficit down to one as the half came to an end. And at the end of the half, a rather animated Tom Davis business with Donnie Gray. Lurisman went uh, really one-on-one. -on -one. You see the clock's down to four seconds. And that uh, shot was missed. This, this is, is what Davis was upset about. Right, here's the shot. The ball's about one second. The ball's on the rim. Richardson goes up for the rebound. It's really hard to tell whether the ball's in or out of the cylinder there. He grabs the rebound. And uh, Tom Davis saw the discussion that followed. 
Big Ten standings up to the minute with the big win today by Michigan at Wisconsin and with Penn State in overtime winning over Ohio State and they look like this. So that moves Iowa to third by itself. They need to win to stay there. If Indiana wins, they move to third. Wisconsin will finish fourth either way. Well, this is what we know about the tournament next week in Chicago, John. Well, the winner of this game, you see Iowa and Indiana at four and five there. The winner of that game goes to three. Wisconsin will drop to four. And we'll try to keep those updated as the uh, as the evening goes on. Minnesota is playing at Northwestern right now. It's been such a great race this year. You know the tournament's going to be spectacular. I think especially with what we've seen happen today. Two upsets, Penn State, uh, Victor at home. So uh, the league was very evenly banned. Uh, balanced. In fact, you talked about Indiana and Iowa, fourth and fifth toughest schedule. Six of the top seven teams in the country. The toughest schedule was in the Big Ten. That's right. In fact, Michigan, number one, Illinois, number two. We mentioned earlier, Indiana, number four, and Iowa, number five. Tough schedules for the Big Ten this year. Turner, Wrecker, Guyton, Gladness, and Richardson on the floor for Indiana to start the second half. And Richardson picks up where he left off in the first half with his ninth point of the ball game. Indiana continues its run, their first lead of the game. First time they've gotten it. Iowa starts the half the way they started the ball game. Settles in Koch up front and Oliver, Bauer, and McCausland on the back line. Good pass by Settles. And Cox with the reverse to score, and Iowa starts the half the way they started the ball game, getting some points inside. And Iowa nearly stole the pass. Good move by Bauer. So the Hawkeyes back into the lead. Again, no lead changes in the first half, and Indiana on the first possession of the second half taking their first lead. Now the Hawkeyes grab it back. Open for three, Wrecker. A little bit of rim there, but it still goes in. Indiana's biggest lead now, just two. For Wrecker, his 59th three of the year. He's a 37% three-point shooter. Better than that today so far. Settles takes gladness in deep. Goes for the reverse and nails it. What a move. He got around not only the Indiana players, but some Iowa players who were in the lane and got the reverse layup. And now Steele at the other end. Almost. Jump ball. Donnie Gray helping Jason Bauer get up. Bauer has spent so much of his Hawkeye career diving for loose basketballs. They got the 20-second timeout. Indiana got the possession, got the timeout called, so we have a 20-second timeout. There's Settles. What a move. Great athletic ability by that young man. Watch him on defense, drips the ball away, down the scramble. Back to television. Welcome back picture. Unusual weather in Bloomington, Indiana on the last Saturday in February, a spring-like thunderstorm. And a good job on the radio there, Larry. I was very impressed. <laughs> Thanks. Jakes nails a three for the Hawkeyes, who now pulled it within one. Oh, tough pass there. Tried behind the back. And now a second behind the back pass. Neither one of those went where they were supposed to. Another one is Guyton tried a quick pass to Turner. So Iowa comes up the floor, down by one, with 16-20 left in regulation. I always got to point out regulation because, as you noted earlier, Indiana has played seven overtime games this year. And it's been a while since Iowa has gone overtime. Yeah, in fact, they have not this season or either of the previous seasons. Settles with a good shot there. This is a crucial part of the game. Remember in Iowa City, this is where Iowa ran away with the game. Here's Turner trying to put the Hoosiers into the lead. What a senior day for Rob Turner. Good awareness by Wrecker. Turner took off. He knows how to finish that shot. In the end of back into the lead by one. Hoosiers did not lead at all in the first half. Down by as many as 14, rallied to make it a one-point game at the half. Good look, Jakes to Oliver. Good movement by Iowa without the ball. The big men were outside. That left the opening in the middle for the guards. Oliver hits the shot. So after no lead changes in the first half, plenty in the first five minutes of the second half. Exactly. It's been back and forth all the way. Richardson nearly lost it. But he's got a hand on it, but the Hoosiers recover. Guyton much more active offensively, trying to find his shot. 
moving well without the ball. That gets him the opening. And that's his key right there. He can hit that three-point shot, likes to drive. I'm sure Bob Knight had some things to mention to Guyton about his first half performance in the locker room. Guyton, two in Iowa City, shut out in the first half of this ball game, but two buckets in the second half. Offensive foul, Joey Rain. And a little banging around there uh, after the whistle. Joey Range and Wrecker, the referee stepped right in. We expected the high intensity with these teams. They like to play hard. Wrecker in good position on range. And now. And so we've got a timeout with 14.48 left in regulation. It's a tight ball game with Indiana leading Iowa. Wrecker. Wrecker gets it. See, Range stuck his right arm out there a little bit. That's what the call was. And as he stepped under the basket he stepped on Wrecker a little bit that brought Luke Wrecker right up Jake separates him Good now there have been times Jakes. that Jake's has sometimes initiated some contact there he was playing peacemaker a nice job now Wrecker and Troy Range going right back at it again this time Range picks up another foul on the slap and that is two on Joey Range. three team fouls now against Iowa one against Indiana Wrecker to take the ball in bounds Indiana has to play with good intensity to stay in this game. And Wrecker has shown that here in the last couple of plays. Three fouls now on range. The range with three, the first player on either squad with more than two. Range doing a good job on Guyton. That's right, Turner guarded by Lersman. Now Guyton trying to break down range. There's Turner slicing through, missing the shot, but drawing a foul as he goes down the lane. And normally, Indiana looks just for Wrecker or Guyton to be their top scorers, and the other guys try to fill it when they can. When Turner starts to have a good game, it really causes some problems for the opponent because he can score on the drive or the jump shots we've seen today. 18 points. For Rob Turner on senior night. Season high, 22 against Wisconsin. Of course, he really broke in with a bang in Indiana last year, transferring from Tyler, Texas Junior College. Got a lot of notes when he got 25 points against Kentucky. And then he really had a tough year the rest of the way. Bob Knight didn't even think he'd be back this year. His grades were bad. He worked hard on his game this summer. He worked hard on his grades. Came back, has made some nice contributions to Indiana's team this year. His two free throws give Indiana a four-point lead. We saw both coaches start their seniors in tonight's game, and that's for the mental edge. You can't tell which guy's going to be ready to play because they know it's their last game. Rob Thurman was ready. Foul called on Larry Richardson. Richardson with his second foul. And Ken McCausland will come to the lineup for Iowa, replacing Dean Oliver. Again, Larry, we've seen Iowa really not go to the three-point shot. It's one of the things that really spurs their offense. Did I speak too soon? <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> McCausland got it. Rucker with the offensive rebound, and he scores his first basket of the game. That's the thing, especially on the road, that can get Iowa going. You start making those three-point shots off the turnovers and get you right in the game. They're only down two. But they've done it mostly with two-point baskets. And apparently Donnie Gray catching some extracurricular activity between Jakes and Gladness and stepping in to get that situation taken care of. Wrecker being chased by Jakes. Iowa turning the pressure up a notch on that possession. Guyton brings it ahead for the Hoosiers. Off the dribble, leaves it short. Rebound to range. Hawkeyes can tie it with the two and grab the lead with the three. Better patience now by Iowa. Probably something Tom Davis talked about at the half. Both teams like to score, but I don't think you're going to get in a scoring race with Indiana at home. Aren't you a little surprised the game this high scoring was still 13-22 to play? Yeah, very much so. These teams only average about 71 and 72, which is high for the Big Ten. And both of them should get there easily. Jakes picks up another foul there. That's his third also. So Jakes has got three, and Range has got three off the bench for Iowa. For Indiana, no player with more than two. Down the lane comes Richardson with the rebound is Jakes. Good defense by Rucker. He forced Richardson to go underneath and 
Even with the, the length of his arms, he couldn't get that shot. Hawkeyes execute well. Rage with a score to tie the ball game at 56. And the foul called on Lurzman, trying with the steal for the Hawkeyes. So now Lurzman joins the group of Hawkeyes with fouls of three. That is his third foul. Well, yeah, that's uh, still 13 minutes left, so the fouls are going to come into play, not only getting to the line for two shots, but some guys may not be available near the end of the game. His Iowa career in his freshman season. Turnover. Ball goes back to Iowa. Bob Knight. Hey, there's nothing more frustrating to a coach than turnovers. You've got the ball. You're trying to figure out how to score. And you throw it away. Now Tom Davis up on the Iowa bench. Did you say both coaches are into this one, John? I would say they both are, Bob Knight and Tom Davis. And there you see the turnover. Settles missing off the baseline. The rebound is run down by Richardson. Indiana and Iowa tied at 56. Larry, there may be a direct... Uh, proportion to the number of gray hairs and turnovers that a coach has so that his team is committed to. No doubt you are right. Haston trying to take it inside and he will go to the line. Here's Kurt Haston averaging 14 points and 10 rebounds over the last five ball games but today two points three boards is all he has. He's a good straight up shooter. Red shirt freshman. Doesn't drive very well. He's a good rebounder. In Iowa, a very physical team, and only the second time he's played against uh, this Hawkeye team. So he's still trying to get a feel for how to handle these Hawks. Six double doubles for Haston. One of the top freshmen in the league, and certainly a contender for freshman of the year honor. His free throws give Indiana a two point lead. Trying to tie it, Oliver, and Oliver will go to the free throw line. How many times today have we seen Indiana score and Oliver come right down? Try to create something. That is the sign of a great point guard. He knows at home if Indiana gets a couple of runs, a couple of baskets in a row, it could be uh, tough for Iowa to come back. He simply comes right down, still below his season's average, but he's really created a lot of things at important times. Oliver hit his first three free throws. He has now missed three in a row. Guyton picks up the foul. That was his first team leaves. Michael Lewis comes in to take his place. Guy to get a little rest, and he'll be back in. The Dean Oliver, normally a very good free throw shooter, misses three in a row before hitting that one to pull Iowa to within one of Indiana with 12 and a half to go. That pass right to Oliver. Good steal. Hawkeyes had nine steals in the first half alone. A high one four offense. Oliver can go either way to come off a high screen. Settles just brought right down the lane. They play the ball to the layup. And I were nearly lost it there. Good hands by Settles. Indiana really turned up their defense in the first 10 minutes of the ball game. Oliver switched now as Lewisman becomes the point guard. Oliver trying to find some scoring. And oh, Settles on the turnaround. 19 for Settles. A season high for Jeff Settles. Second time he's made that fall away jump shot. It's a very pretty shot. Hard to hit though. Five second call. Indiana did not get the ball in quick enough. Turnover. And there goes to Iowa. And the turnover gives Iowa a chance to regain the lead. Let's look at that shot by the sixth year senior one more time. This is tough because you're falling away. You good pressure by Hasten. Nothing but net. Hasten right there. Bauer, Oliver, Lurzman, Settles, and Jake from the Iowa lineup has tried to take it to the rack is Settles, and right there in front of him is Richardson. All right, nice block there to avoid the foul. And now Richardson helps out, clearly blocked on top of the ball. And Richardson right up into the face of Jake. The prize third seed in the tournament, and you can tell both these teams won it. That and Senior Day, a couple of the great motivators. Richardson on the foul. That will be his third foul. Say hey, both these teams may be uh, happy that Wisconsin lost. They could have met in the four or five game again next Friday. That's right. I That's think they're getting their hands full with each other here today, let alone know we got to play them again next week. They anyway, may end up playing next week, but they won't be in the first game. Indeed, Jake against three oh, Hoosiers scored. Good move there as he fakes going all the way under for the reverse layup and comes right back. 
And nobody there to contest the shot. So Iowa regains the lead. Power going for the steal. Kicks it out of bounds, and so it will be Indiana with the basketball. Gladden is back in for the Hoosiers. Guyton also comes back in. Richardson and Turner lead. Well, Coslin is for Iowa replacing Oliver. You mentioned the Michigan upset of Wisconsin. The Badgers go into the tournament with a three-game losing streak. They had a great year right until the end, so they'll finish fourth in the conference. Move that foot. Tom Davis up again. Coaching his final Big Ten game. 13 seasons at the University of Iowa coming to a close whenever the Hawkeyes lose again after today. Just over eight to play, and it's Indiana with their biggest lead of five at 68-63. Oliver had a notion. Guyton came on him, so a good look to J.R. Koch. Now that's what I mean. Oliver's the guy who puts Iowa back in the game at times like this. He finds Koch open for the layup. Wrecker on the attack for Indiana. Tom Davis calls the change in defense from the Iowa bench. Zone now. 2-3 zone. And you see McCausland and Oliver come out. Iowa wants to try to force Indiana the outside shot. They've been successful getting it inside against the man-to-man. -man. Rucker will step up, take a three. Ace with a rebound, split from him by McCausland. And four on two for Iowa. Bauer tries to finish. Bauer travels. Don Davis holds his head. Gary Close behind him says, I don't think so, but it's Indiana ball. When we return, 721 to play in regulation. It's Indiana 68. Both teams have got the field. They're in pretty good positions at this point. And this is the kind of game that players like to be in. You know, there's some mistakes. There's some good plays. But it's just who's going to win the basketball game. This is what the uh, Big Ten is all about. It certainly is. Good shooting by the Hawkeyes, 53%. 10 offensive rebounds, pretty typical for them. Indiana, 61%. Very good against this Iowa defense. 20 rebounds, that's pretty good. Here we go, and I think, uh, Larry, you're right. That's why the Big Ten tournament's going to be so exciting. The upsets we've seen today already, the close games like this one, these matchups you're going to see over the next weekend are going to be very interesting. Top to bottom. Not a gimme in the league Top this year. Bottom. That's exactly right. right. Easton, Guyton, Lewis, Wrecker, and Gladys on the floor for Indiana. Now the zone still by Iowa, something they, they've been man-to-man -man most of the game. Looks like they'll go zone here for a while. Shot clock winding down, Lewis draws the B, comes up with a miss, and the rebound foul against Haston as Koch grabs it for Iowa. 16 fouls now in Indiana, so one more before Iowa goes to the line. Indiana by the fact that Iowa's got 10 fouls already, has two. Bob Knight thinking of his next play. And for Haston, his fourth personal foul. He's had a good game. Indiana would not want to lose him. So both teams have a big guy with four fouls. Jakes for Iowa, Haston for Indiana. Coming off the pick, it is McCausland. Rebound by Rucker in the middle, taken away by Rucker. Guyton for three. A.J. shut out of the first half, picking it up in the second half, and Indiana equals their biggest lead. That's a big play there. Not only did McCausland miss the three, but Rucker had the rebound and lost it. Indiana with a three. Good move by Bauer. Blocking foul on Luke Rucker, his first foul. Seventh foul on Indiana. So Jason Bauer will go to the line. Watch Rucker. He gets this ball away to Guyton, and Guyton will do this. Stops up, hits the three. Two threes in the second half and a team leading 70. Threes on the season for A.J. Guyton as Bauer hits his first point of the game. Jason Bauer, a walk-on. His teammates call him Eddie. You've heard of the clothing store, Eddie Bauer, but the reason is not that, but the fact that J.R. Koch, his given first name is Jason. There's Jason Smith, there's Jason Price, and a couple of managers named Jason as well. They had to call him Eddie, so everybody knew who they were talking to. <laughs> he hits a pair, and Iowa pulls back within four of Indiana. 
Lee Recker right as his season average as he comes out for a minute. Hasten on the turnaround, but right there to tip it in is Gladness. First bucket of the day for Gladness, but it's a big one. And Gladness started late in the Illinois game on Wednesday for Indiana as well. Big tip in there. Indiana up by six. Indiana's not done a good job of holding leads this year. Rucker tried to force something. Haston was all over, really nothing going, but he tried to force his shot. Same play we saw in the first half that went against Indiana when the defense touches the ball, but it doesn't leave your hand. You've got to get rid of it before you come back down. The hottest talk, I Jeff Settles comes back. So does Jacob Jakes with four fouls. So Jakes comes in with four, 541 left. But uh, six-point lead now. Tom Davis can't let this lead get any farther away from him. Here is Trigger coming up the floor. Let's correct the scoring on Haston, by the way. Three fouls. The official score informs us rather than the four that we mentioned a moment ago. And speaking of fouls, there's one. Guyton pulls up well beyond the three-point line that time. And the foul on Lursman will give Guyton three shots from the line. And that will be four on Ryan Lursman. So Lursman and Jakes, four apiece for the Hawkeyes. And Indiana has two players with three, Richardson and Hastings. Nine for A.J. Guyton, all in this half. This is the critical part of the game right here. Five minutes to go, five and a half. Indiana's got the lead. It's up to eight points. Tom Davis brings Oliver and Range back in. This is when Iowa's got to start to make, to close this gap. Where Indiana will have the opportunity to be at the foul line and put this one away. Indiana with their biggest lead of the game. And it's the hat trick for A.J. 76-67. The Hoosier lead grows to nine. Indiana right now, four players in double figures. And, John, they have not lost a game this year when they've had that kind of balance. They are 10-0 when four players are in double figures. Look at Gladness and Settles mixing it up inside. That foul's going to go, double foul goes against both Settles and Gladness. Second on Settles, third on Gladness. So that uh, ball remains in Iowa possession. And they're back at each other, being guarded. Gladness guarding uh, Settles now. We're not even to the tournament yet. Imagine what it's going to be like next week. Yeah, I think they're both happy they don't play the 4-5 game next, next week. The crowd's getting on Jake's a little bit. He's just played a hard physical game. Range tries to go inside against Turner. Gets some help. Settles going for the tip. The ball knocked out of bounds. Trying to save it, Jacob Jakes. And Jakes takes out a cameraman and a cheerleader. In the meantime, and again, now some more people get to see a little Big Ten basketball up close. Jake's trying <laughs> to save it. I mean, the players have learned that if you leave the floor inbounds, you grab the ball, you can call that 20-second timeout. It looks like you're going to lose the ball, but if the official hears you, you can get that 20 and retain possession. Lewis tries in down right off the bridge of the nose of Jacob Jake. And Tom Davis is raging. Tom Davis thinks it's intentional. He comes screaming to the midcourt line. And let's see. Now Davis on the floor. Lewis was trying to avoid the five-second call and threw the ball into Jake's face right on the nose. Let's watch it. And there's no time to react. Caught him right in the face so that Indiana could keep possession of the ball. And there Jake's got a smile on his face. In fact, that happened to Jakes the other day against Northwestern. Tom Davis is sure it's intentional. That's why he exploded off the bench the moment that the play occurred, because he's seen it before. Now, there's no telling what the mindset of Lewis was and whether it was intentional or not. Jakes is right back uh, guarding Lewis again. So oh. here we go one more time. The officials still talk about Bob Knight at the midcourt line. Jake, Jake's fortunately uh, nose not bleeding. As you get a close-up look there, he's, he's giving Michael Lewis a stare a little bit. Bob Knight wants timeout, it looks like. 
you want a timeout or does he want a tee on Tom Davis for jumping out onto the floor? I'm not sure which. Now the officials uh, are at the scores table. You know, John, I noticed during the last Iowa possession, Tom Davis walked to the scores table and said something all the game was underway. So there may also be something at the scores bench that he's not happy about. Now both coaches are there. Donnie Gray explaining the situation. Mark Gelly with his back to you, the other official. We've seen just about everything this afternoon, John. It's been quite a game, and uh, uh, the good news is we have five minutes left to go. What else uh, could transpire? One of those games you don't want to end. Well, as I mentioned, at five and a half minutes, it's a crucial part of the game. Now it's Indiana by nine. Well, this gives us the chance to take a look at some other scores brought to you by ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. And here was a big upset earlier. Michigan beats Wisconsin. Another one, Penn State wins at home. Here's the other game in progress currently. Very close, Minnesota at Northwestern. Maryland wins. Uh, they'll remain in the top five. Florida is upset by Vanderbilt. Villanova, the upset over St. John's. Miami of Florida, what a good job uh, they've done this year. Meanwhile, Tom Davis and Donnie Gray continue to debate at the midpoint line. Missouri, an upset over Texas, so it was upset Saturday around the country. It must be uh, something more than just a simple interpretation of the rule, or it really wouldn't take this long for the officials to, to make a decision. Well, I think it is. As I mentioned, I saw it. Tom Davis walk over to the scores table during the play, which would be highly unusual. He talked to the officials. He said something to someone else at the scores bench. Now that's going to be a technical foul, and A.J. Guyton is going to shoot some free throws for Indiana. When that play transpired, Davis got off the bench, came down the court, and a technical foul was called. And that puts Indiana at the line. A.J. Guyton will shoot where he hits him at 78 percent and is perfect on the day in three tries. Got the roll on that one. So he'll get a second foul. Indiana will still have the ball out of bounds. Indiana goes to a double figure lead. Boy, well short on that one. So now Indiana will take it at half court instead of having to come all the way. So a technical was fouled on called on Tom Davis. Lewis inbounds to Guyton as we near the five-minute mark. Well, we talked about Indiana being 10-0. And they get four players in double figures. This foul goes on Haston. Let's watch. Jake's in Haston. And Jake's goes down. Haston called for the foul. His fourth. We had mentioned he had four before, but we, the scores table uh, said he only had three, so now that is his four. And Jacob Jakes will go to the line with a 67% free throw average on the season. Has not shot one today. And this crowd quite loud when he let that one go. Exactly five to go in regulation. Indiana, no stranger to close games. Played seven overtime games this year. Jakes in double figures with 10. Indiana's lead is eight. You want the ball in the hands of your guards. Haston gives it up quickly to break this Iowa press. And deep is Lewis. The rebound by Gladys tries to get it out of difficulty, but it's taken away by Jakes. He clears the ball, which of course you can do legally. The crowd doesn't like it. Range calls for it against Turner. McCausland for three. Our guys with another possession. I was going to have to look for some threes to get back. They trail by eight. Now a whistle away from the ball. And this is on Gladness. Double foul again. So it's on Gladness. And if it's Jakes, he'll be gone. Let's see. It is. Jakes has fouled out. Another double foul. 
you can go a season without seeing more than one double foul. And we've seen two in the same half. There's Jakes and Gladness. They go in. They meet each other. It's called on that contact when they both uh, met. It wasn't when they received the ball. It was before that as they moved in. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Jakes is, say Jakes is not left. Now, there's the announcement, and now he knows that he is done with 421 to play. Ten points for Jacob Jakes. Make it 12. Here's Settles getting gladness into the air. Bach nears the four-minute, ten-second mark as Indiana has an eight-point lead. The winner of this ball game gets the third seed in next week's Big Ten tournament. Oliver off the baseline with sound on the shot clock. And the ball is pushed out of bounds by Joey Range. It's Indiana ball. We've got a timeout with 3.58 left in regulation. It's a wild one in Bloomington. The Hoosiers lead the Hawkeyes. 77 call Bloomington, Indiana. Senior day for the Hoosiers. They lead the Hawkeyes 77 to 69. Boy, what a game, Larry. You can see the Indiana crowd pleased with what's happened as Indiana got off to a slow start. Have made a nice charge in the second half. Now, will the Iowa press, though, enable them to get some shots? Three-point shooting. Usually, it's a help for the Hawkeyes. They're going to need some down the stretch to get back in this one. Only three by the Hawkeyes. Lewis Guyton, Wrecker, Haston, and Gladness on the floor for Indiana. Wrecker trying to break down the range. The shot clock is 12. The block by Conch, and it's Oliver coming up with it for the Hawkeyes. Oh, what a pass. What a pass by Oliver. And a little scoop pass. Very difficult to control right to Conch. Range there for the finish. Indiana now wants to use some clock. Look at two free throws. Both teams over the 10 limit now. So both teams will get two free throws. Indiana will try to run the clock. Try to get that shot with under 10 seconds. But make it a good shot as well. Wrecker and Turner are the hottest Hoosiers today. Turner not on the floor right now. Guyton shoots with six on the shot clock. Gladys cracking inside for the rebound. Huh? Twice now, in the last two possessions, Gladys has been able to come up with an offensive rebound. Keeps in possession in Indiana. McCaws one call for the foul. His second sends Gladness to the line with 2.49 to play. Well, there's the block. Look, Joy Range steps in front of Gladness, but then he lets him slide to the right. McCaws will have his right arm on Gladness' shoulder to pick up the foul. So Gladness, who has scored two on this, his final home appearance in an Indian League uniform, just fires on the free throw. Lures been in. McCaws went out. Gladness, a 64% free throw shooter. Goes one out of two on this exchange, and Indiana boosts their lead to 78-71. I mean, don't forget, Larry, two possessions could be six points for these Hawkeyes. It's a, it's a three-possession game right now, and he leads by seven, but Iowa can come back quickly. There's one of them right there, J.R. Koch. And a timeout stops play. Iowa can set their press up two and a half minutes, a long time. Yet to play. Indeed it is. 78-74 Indiana with the lead. And this 20-second timeout is brought to you by Speed. This is offensive rebounds. Indiana leads the league. Iowa is second. It's not the average offensive rebounds per game. That is a new stat that's been kept by the Big Ten this year. Hawkeyes needed a key three, and they got one right there. J.R. Koch, a big guy, steps outside. That is his first three of this ballgame, 21st of the year, and Koch with 15 points. His season high 20 at Purdue, so he likes playing on Indiana soil, doesn't he? Sure does. We talked about those threes. Look at the rebounding. Iowa's going to have to shoot from three. Record can't get it in bounds. It calls the timeout. Indiana wants another 20-second timeout. They are kind of doing a great job of preventing the inbounds pass. This 
20 second timeout brought to you by finish line as we look at the assist indiana leading the league in assists as well northwestern northwest iowa tied for third so both these teams move that ball around try to find the open guy of course when you talk assists you talk about lewis and oliver two of the better assist men in the big ten so going back to the offensive rebounds that's a new category it means how many rebounds did you get that's offensive. Defense rebounds, how many teams your, how many rebounds your opponent get? So what that step meant was that Indiana and Iowa get more rebounds themselves in a game than any other team. Not how many offensive rebounds they get. It wouldn't nearly be that high. Indiana without a basket in nearly four minutes, but of course they've hit their free throws, and that's why they maintain this four-point lead. But they're looking to end a bit of a field goal drop right here on this possession. Record drops his shoulder, goes to the baseline, misses the shot, and the rebound. Falling out of bounds, trying to save it. J.R. Koch can't do it. Good hands by Turner as Koch tried to throw it off of him out of bounds. And as important as anything, they get to Indiana a fresh 35. And they fly, try to wind down the clock. Guyton against Oliver. Good one-on-one -on -one matchup there. Iowa back to man-to-man. Wrecker goes down. Stays down. Turner with the miss. Lures with the rebound. Iowa with the ball. Down by four. The Hawkeyes and the Hoosiers set up for a cardiac finish. Everybody thought the Oliver was going to take that shot. Settles with a good fake to score. 21 for Settles on a season-high day for Jeff Settles. Again, that was the same. He got to turn that right shoulder instead of fading away. He faded to the left and cuts the lead to two. So a two-point goal game with a minute 16 to play, and we'll be right back. And 16 seconds to play. Lots at stake here because the winner gets the third seed in next week's Big Ten tournament. That is a very important position to be in to try to win the whole thing. That'd be the late game on Friday. Then if you won that game, you'd play the probably the uh, the two winner, which is Ohio State. Like play them on Saturday, and then conceivably Michigan State on. Sunday, but as soon as I tell you what those matches are going to be, it's going to be wrong. <laughs> Somebody's going to get upset. We know it. Well, we've already seen it today. Range fouls Lewis on the inbound play. Fourth against Range, Lewis, a 76% free throw shooter, goes to the line with 1.15 to go, and his team up by two. Indiana with a very small lineup. Gladness, the only big man in there. He's with Turner, Lewis, Guyton and Wrecker, so four of the guards for Indiana. Settles Koch and Joy Range uh, give Iowa the height inside much bigger than Indiana. But John, you realize if this game goes into overtime, then Indiana ties the NCAA record. It would be their eighth. They've already got the Big Ten record, having played seven. Lewis hits a pair, and it's a four-point ball game. Koch looked at a three. There's been fine settles. Settles goes to the glass and misfires. Cox with a rebound will jam it home. There's the rebounding edge. Iowa just too big with their lineup right now for Indiana. Range with a deflection. Cox with a steal. Iowa can tie it with a two, take the lead with a three, but a foul is called on Gladness. Deflection on the pass by the Hawkeyes. Again, it was the height advantage that forced that turnover. Koch came up with it, held on to it. So Gladness fouled him. So Gladness with a foul, sending Koch to the line. Fourth foul called on William Gladness. Koch, a 73% free throw shooter, two of two today, has scored 17 points, one of his better performances in Big Ten play. And the best he can do now is make this a one-point game. If he makes it, you know that Iowa will put the press back on. If he misses, Indiana will still have to shoot before the shot clock expires. Fresh shot clock for Indiana, 53 on the game clock. Range almost with the steal of the inbounds, and Wrecker recovers for Indiana. Pass saved by Lewis, and he is fouled by Oliver. 
To Oliver with his third foul, Lewis will go to the line. The Indiana really spread the uh, Hawkeye defense out there at half court. Good catch by Lewis. That ball up pretty high. And he'll go to the line. He's perfect in four free throw tries today. So 42.4 shows on the clock. He's a pressure player. Lewis has had great games for Indiana recently late in the game. Assist and point. Kent McCausland, who will go down as one of the top career three-point percentage shooters in Big Ten and in NCAA history, has come on. If Lewis hits this one, the margin will be three. And that's what it is. Very calm there by Lewis. Two big points for Indiana. Hawkeyes need a three to tie. About a seven-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock, and Guyton comes up with a big steal. Guyton tipped that ball, and McCausland couldn't come up with it. Guyton now goes to the line, settles a smart play, the quick foul. Okay, the shot clock will no longer be a factor. <laughs> All right, let's look, see? Actually, Guyton just got in the vision of McCaws. They didn't tip the ball, but he got in the eyesight of McCaws, and they couldn't follow the path of the ball, and he couldn't come up with it. Guyton, four out of five today at the line, and 78% on the season. Got the roll on that one. He doesn't look very comfortable up there, and the player's momentum follows him across the line. A little unusual for Guyton on his free throw. But it was a big one. It makes it a two-possession game. Need to score quickly. Here comes Oliver. Oliver will go inside. He'll lose the ball to Wrecker. And a tie ball is spotted. It's Iowa ball. Keep that. Uh... This is an alternate possession. Not on the tie ball forced by the defense. So Iowa has that on the alternate possession. But Cosman ready to trigger. Players trying to get set on that line. Tom Davis, Davis asking for a 20. And I'll get it. Now often McCausland, as a lot of good three-point shooters do, will try to pop back to the outside as soon as they inbound. regular season game goes down to the final 19.7 seconds. Now, Iowa pretty simply needs a hoop here, two or a three, then they need a steal on the press. They go for the two. Settles draws the foul and will go to the line with 16.6 remaining. That nearly rolled in. Now Settles will have to earn two from the line. Wrecker on the foul. But it does set up a situation where Iowa can make two free throws, go right to the press. And you know how it's really affected Indiana. Several turnovers caused by Indiana by this press. What an incredible finish for Jess Settles. Remember years ago, Big Ten Freshman of the Year? Well, he's finishing as he started. 16 against Illinois, 16 against Northwestern, 22 today against Indiana. Now, Indiana makes some substitution. They got some smaller players in there now who can handle the ball and assume Iowa will foul and try to hit some free throws. Four guards in now for Indiana. Tom Davis with Luersman. Here's how you need to set the press up. We need a steal and a three-point shot. So Settles does his part. He knocks down the free throws. No substitution. You have to wait till after the free throw goes in to substitute. Indiana wanted to try to get it in quickly. Now Iowa has their press set up. Wrecker finds Lewis. Foul away from the ball. That was Bauer on Gladness. One Gladness to go to the line, and they were away from the ball, so Bauer was set up to foul Gladness, and he did. Gladness was way over on the right. See, the ball's really not even in yet. Bauer's just kind of trying to force him out of bounds. So Gladness, a 64% free throw shooter, goes to the line. One of two today. 
That's a big one. 45 percent in Big Ten play. So a big free throw for Gladys makes the four point game. That is a huge one. On senior night. I guess we could expect that. I guess we could. Turner steps up big with 20. Gladys hits some clutch free throws down the stretch. There are the two Indiana seniors. Oliver will go inside for the two as it's stopped by Gladys, and Indiana's going to win it. Wrecker tries to punctuate the finish. So Indiana and Iowa will finish in a tie for third, but the third seed belongs to the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana with an 88-81 victory over the Iowa Hawkeyes. In the first half, the Hoosiers trailed by 14 points. But they fought back, and Knight and Settles got to have a lot of respect for each other in the hug by Knight against well, one of the really memorable players in Big Ten history. Jeff Settles is the type of player Bob Knight really respects. He plays hard, uses his ability to the, to the max, and uh, I know Bob Knight's probably a little tired of seeing Settles all these years, but what great respect he has and uh, what great respect uh, Settles has earned from Coach Bob Knight. 23 for Settles. Let's take a look at the key play of the game brought to you by KeyBank. Help it every return. It was a great save by Wrecker, and this was Guyton one-on-one. -on -one. He pulled up for a three, and the first chance Indiana got its lead up to about seven or eight. Well, John Laskowski, this was quite a finish to the regular season for both the Hoosiers and the Hawkeyes as Indiana comes from behind to win it, 88-81. Good, good game by both teams, and I think, Larry, it's just a preview of what we'll see next week in Chicago. Again, the final tonight from Bloomington, Indiana, 88, Iowa, 81. For John Laskowski, this is Larry Turner and William Gladness. We'll look at the highlights of today's game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. On Indiana wins on senior night, the last home game for Rob Turner and William Gladness. Both of them have pretty big games. Let's now go to our power player of the game, brought to you by Synergy PSI, where energy comes to life. And it is Rob Turner, 20 points on seven to nine field goals, five rebounds. He got a start, and he really capped things off right here as he takes this one all the way in for the jam. What a way to finish your career at Indiana, a victory and a big game by Rob Turner. Time now for the Ellenberger Report. It's brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Now let's go courtside to Ted Kitchell and Norm Ellenberger. Coach, obviously a huge win for Indiana. Not only, uh, not only does it position them well in the Big Ten tournament, but it's got to be a big boost mentally to know you can come out and play against a big, strong team and a competitive team like Iowa and play as well as Indiana did when they needed to. Uh, you know, we've been getting a few leads in recently and letting the other guy come and catch us and it was kind of neat to, in that first half for us to do the catching and it was a actually when you think about it, this is the way a, a final basketball game playing for everything uh, should come out it should be good and rough and tough and and every time you play Iowa you better you know you, you better have your deck stacked too because it's going to be a good old rough ball game coach coach just told the team in there just now I said this is the biggest game that this crew has won in the, in the last three years so that's a pretty good compliment to them. Before we talk about individuals, talk a little bit about the team. that They were down 14 with about five and a half minutes left in the first half. Obviously, one of the individuals, Rob Turner, came up big, but the last five and a half minutes of the first half might have been the reason Indiana won this game. Well, if you don't make that run and you go in 10 or 12 down at half, uh, you've dug yourself probably too big of a hole. But the pro problem, the way we got into that thing, we uh, was the ball handling. You know, we, the press took it away from us five or six times, and, and uh, Coach made zero changes at halftime. Uh, everything that we that he had set up for them to do as far as offensively and the defensive plan was plugged in and, and he didn't say any reason to change it just a case of, of execution and uh, and then and then make some shots and we we did that and then got AJ got the ball around the ball never reversed to AJ in the whole first half and he didn't get any shots and finally got a little bit more patience and the ball reversed the second half and he came alive Talk a little bit about some of the individuals. You talk a little bit about A.J., but first talk about Rob Turner, a guy that hasn't played a lot, 
but against against specific teams he ple seems to play a lot early against Iowa out there he got the start played well early uh, against Wisconsin and then coach came back with him again today and he had just an outstanding game he was the power player of the game with 20 points this kind of game's a Rob Turner kind of game he uh, he won't back he won't back up against anything he's got a, a good strong will and, and there was a lot of uh, garbage a lot of up and down a lot of street basketball going today and boy you're you're playing right to his strengths because you give him some cracks and give him a little bit of a uh, chance to make some moves and he can and, and then hit a shot or two and he's off for the races we'll talk a little bit about the leaders Guyton Wrecker and Lewis I thought were fantastic they really came through handled the ball and did an excellent job for Indiana well coach did a lot of substituting early in the ball game and he did that purposely so we'd have some fresh people and it came down to the wire with the, those three guys were the ones that he wanted in there to have the ball Okay, we'll be back in a second. Let's go to Coach Knight at midcourt. It's a lot better than this time last year. And, uh, and one of the reasons was because we had three officials tonight instead of two. Let you know, we're pretty good about other teams and other kids. And you know, we've never had a kid play against us that competes any harder than that Settles kid does. Let's give him a hand. I'm, I'm sure they'll try and figure out a way to get him a seventh year of eligibility. But he's a hell of a competitor. All right, let's have all the guys and gals from the Palms and the cheerleaders that are seniors come forward here. One, one more time around from the seniors in the band from America's Best Pep Band. Let's go. The, the pep band before you, and I hope as long as I'm here, has been a really integral part of Indiana basketball. And to all of you guys up here, the same thing. And thanks from all of us to you seniors for being a part of Indiana University basketball. Thank you. Now, I'd, I'd, I'd like everybody to sit down. I told, isn't that great to be able to make 17,000 people sit down? I told, I told, I told Hamill after the game up at Northwestern a couple of weeks ago that I wasn't so sure that I had ever seen at one time so many people give me the finger. And Hamill's, Hamill's response was, oh yes you have. But, but Tim Garl had the greatest line of the season when he followed that up by saying, Coach, this is a small arena. <laughs> what I'd like now, while you're seated, and the reason I asked you to sit down for just a moment, I'd like all the former Indiana players from as far back as you're here to please stand. All the former Indiana basketball players, please stand. I, 
I don't, I don't know what the hell that lady in red was standing up there for. Unless she used to date one of these players or something, I don't know. Uh, we have, every year, we have really good managers. And I, <clears throat> I could stay up here and maybe talk about our managers longer than, than anything else, but you never see what they do. The coaches know what they do, and I think the players know what they do. I'd like to have the three of them come out and stand. Rob Bacalar, Jeremiah Shirk, and Joe Pasternak. We have the thing that I think you always look forward to at, at the end of our season. Uh, you look forward to hearing the players, and I look forward to going fishing. Uh, had, had two guys tonight, and just like a couple years ago, uh, what a fitting end it was for our two seniors tonight with the play throughout the game. Uh, by Will Gladness and by Rob Turner. It was a... <laughs> this is a... We got, we got a little, little bit of play left, I hope, and we're going to need these two guys not, not just to wind up with this afternoon's game, but to have that get us a start through postseason play, and they'll speak with Will first and Rob second alphabetically. Um, took me a while to figure that out, but before Will steps up, I don't really think I've ever done this before, but it seems to me to be an extremely fitting thing to do, and that's give Rob Turner the game ball from today. Thank you um, First of all, I'd like to thank Coach Knight for um, coming down and looking at me in JUCO and giving me uh, the opportunity to come here and play. And second of all, I ain't never in my life played in, this, in front of this many people. And every time I run out, it's great. Even though bad game or no, I mean, a good game, I come out and, I mean, I'd be pumped up just running out. But. <laughs> Another thing, I'd like to thank all my family that came from West Memphis, all the crazy people up there. <laughs> and my boys up there too. <laughs> and the most important person of my life right now that I want to thank is my mother sitting over there in the wheelchair. Thank you, Mom, I love you. And I'd like to thank all the professors and tutors, even though school ain't over yet, but I'm on my way out of here on time. And I'd like to thank my tutor, Buzz, for keep coming and getting me out the dressing room to check on my grades all the time. <laughs> and um, there's a lot more people I'd like to thank, but I'm not going to take up too much time. But oh, one more person. 
If he's watching, I'd like to thank my junior college coach, Coach Mur Ron Murphy. He's a great guy, and I love him. Uh, I can't forget to thank my, my teammates, AJ, Dan, all of them, y'all already know all of them, and Jared, Tom, all the managers, Antoine, the whole coaching staff, even though it's been some up and down times, um, some kind of way I found a way to still love all of them. They put up with me this much, so. <laughs> but um, I'd like to thank everybody for supporting me, bad, good times, or whatever. And once again, thank my family for coming to see me play one more time. First of all, I would like to thank the fans for coming out each game and supporting us. I would like to I would like to thank the fans who couldn't make it to the game and seen us on TV. I think you know that was a good thing. I like to you know thank them too. <laughs> uh, I also like to thank uh, one specific person. Uh, a guy by the name of Ron Fallon, you know, got me here, and um, I thank him with all my heart for getting me here. <laughs> Mr. Fallon. There he is right there. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank, you know, all my team members for supporting me. Even though I've been some good times, some bad times, you know, I would like to thank them for sticking with me through the whole thing. We can go down the line, but, uh, Odo, uh, Luke Jimenez, Fife, <laughs> AJ, Luke, Mike, Lynn, Kirk, Tom, Larry, managers, coaching staff, everybody, everybody's clap your hands. Thank you. I forgot about Kyle Hornsey. All right, the seniors, Rob Turner and William Gladness, their remarks. When we come back, we'll announce our sub of the game and look at our final stats. Big Ten tournament. Let's go back to Ted and Norm. Coach, before we get to Greg, uh, just a little bit about the two seniors, Gladness and Rob Turner. Uh, William Gladness and Rob Turner, they both came out today, had outstanding games. Uh, talk a little bit about them. Well, as, as I just look here, they both played 30 minutes. Actually, Gladys played 34 minutes, and that gives you an indication of, of their athleticism and, and, and the toughness that they've got. Uh, while it didn't always come out, it, it, you know, they had some really dips. But I think the best thing you can say about those seniors, no matter what the dips and the valleys that they had, they were able to come back on a game like this and really peak out and have a great performance. So they've, they've been uh, fine squad members. Well, let's take a look at today's Great Clips, brought to you by Great Clips with over 40 Indianapolis locations. And we'll start out with one of the seniors, William Gladness. Well, he got the ball down in, inside to him. And, oh, this is the one on his, and a great, great follow-up on that. Got in behind that zone and came up with a great offensive rebound. And, and he was active like that uh, all night long on, against that zone. AJ. Yeah. But see, AJ didn't, didn't get that shot in the first half because they were behind us chasing us under. And, and the ball never, ever got reversed. And that was a perfect example of what Coach wanted the ball reversed for in the second half. And Luke Recker. Well, Recker came down and got, got away and got, he got a couple of these. And he also hit a couple big shots in the thing. So every ball game we've got, why well, we've got both of those two guys on great clips. Well, it's been an awfully good season. We sure appreciate you coming out each and every night, win or lose. Uh, congratulations and good luck in the in the Big Ten tournament and the NCAA tournament. That, uh, if any indication of the games we've been in, that's going to be a hairy, hairy tournament, isn't it? Should be a lot of fun. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Laz. It's been great to have Norm Ellenberger with us this whole time. When we come back, we'll look at the final stats and announce our super sub of the game. Seven. 
in Big Ten play. Let's review our fueling factors brought to you by Fast Max. If it's got to be fast, it's got to be Max. Let's, re let's review Laz's fueling factors, and they were two very good fueling factors. Laz, you did a heck of a job. Thank you, Ted. Field goal percentage for Indiana. They needed to shoot the ball very well. They came out not only from the field. They shot 54%, which is pretty sizzling for this team, but also... Uh, they shot like 29 of 32 from the free throw line. So a team that was uh, focused in and shooting the ball very well. And how about rebounding? It had to be important against a much bigger, stronger Iowa team. Indiana out-rebounds Iowa here today in Bloomington, 29-27. And probably the rebounding and the free throw shooting is probably where Indiana ended up winning this game. Now let's take a look at those final stats brought to you by Union Federal Savings Bank. All your banks should be. You see Iowa, they shot the ball very well also. Just a tad under 50%. You can see the free throws, really, where Indiana in the, in the past years has won games. That's where they won it today, 29 of 32, not only getting there a lot, but also capitalizing when they did get there. Three-point field goal shooting, Iowa very poor, 4 of 19, while Indiana 50%. Rebounds, as we mentioned, Indiana with a little bit of an edge. Offensive rebounds, Iowa with the edge, a little bigger and stronger inside. And the turnovers, Indiana... You know, two or three spurts there where they turn it over two or three times in a row. Uh, they've got 24 turnovers. Not many times are you going to win games when you have 24 turnovers, but the Hoosiers victorious here in Bloomington today. Well, maybe it came down to crunch time. Let's take a look at our crunch time totals brought to you by Rachel's Gourmet Potato Chips. Well, you can see Iowa trying to catch up in that last four minutes, and they got it to 78-76 within two points, and I think most of the Indiana fans turned around and said, okay, what's this team going to do? Uh, we've seen it before where they've kind of went away, and uh, not today. Did a nice job in crunch time. Iowa outscores them. Indiana out-rebounds them. Turnover's about the same. So uh, you can see Indiana very importantly going to the line 10 times in the last four minutes and winning the game there. A little unusual starting lineup tonight with Gladness and Turner both in there. Now time for the sub of the game brought to you by Subway, the way a sandwich should be. Michael Lewis, I think, has just been superb. Maybe I should say sub Superb. Very huh? good. Suburb. Very good. Ten points. You can see not only running the team, but also getting to the basket, scoring ten points. Very important when he can put points on the board. It's one more guy you have to guard for Indiana. Uh, I thought he came in and won the game in Champaign the other night against Illinois. Tonight, I thought he came in and did an excellent job of running the basketball team, getting the ball where it needed to be. We talked about Indiana being the number three seed, which they will be. We'll tell you what time they play and who they might play against when we come back. Bloomington. All right. What a game. Indiana, very intense. Pulled it out. Great stats. What a, what a battle this Big Ten tournament is going to be, which leads us to our Union Federal Internet questions. And our first question comes from Bill Scott. And he wants to know, what, will, what would the Big Ten tourney brackets look like if the tournament began today? Well, it's not too far away. Well, it starts hell. next Thursday. What a question. Why don't we take a look? And, le and let's just see what the standings are, and then we'll see what, uh, what, how this leads into the brackets. Indiana's moved to 9-7, and seven, tied Wisconsin and Iowa. Based on the tiebreaker, they move ahead of both those teams. So Indiana is the number three seed. Wisconsin and Iowa finish in a tie for third. Minnesota won today. They beat Northwestern at Northwestern. They moved to 8-8. Eight eight. Purdue still has a game to go against Michigan State tomorrow for their last game. They'll, they'll uh, determine that. Michigan State, of course, still the Big Ten champion, regardless of how the outcome is tomorrow. So that brings us to the brackets. And there we are. There are the teams on the left that will play on Thursday. And let me tell you that if Purdue wins tomorrow, I'm going to sh show them as number six seed. If they lose tomorrow, they would move to number seven seed. There you see Indiana. They will play the winner of the Minnesota-Illinois game if Minnesota finishes sixth. And if Purdue would finish seventh by losing tomorrow, they would play the winner of Purdue, Illinois, on Friday. Yeah, Purdue uh, definitely needing a win there. Michigan playing some great basketball, went to Wisconsin today, held Wisconsin to 39 points on their home floor. Michigan playing very well right now. Illinois still struggling a little bit. I'm sure Coach Katie and the Boilermakers would rather play Illinois at this point in time than Michigan. The other thing in that draw, look at Indiana. If they were to win that game, would take on Ohio State, the number two seed, and then would not play Michigan State until later on in the final game, which would be on Sunday. I want to remind you also that the Varsity Club the Alumni Association will have their pep rally. It'll be at 8.30 at the Hyatt Regency on East Wacker, Friday morning, 8.30 to 10.30, the pep rally for the team. Come on by if you're going to be in the Chicago area. Now let's talk. I had a chance to talk with Clarence Doniger earlier today. We had a special presentation from Key Bank. Clarence, on behalf 